Anything you learned? Or? Yeah. Excuse my limited knowledge. <laughs> but when he composed this for that orchestra, do you think he did all the piano first and then all the orchestra? Or seems like, how does that work? That's a, that's a great question. I think my guess is, I think because the original uh, is for, is for uh, two, two pianos, I believe. Um, so he did, I think, he worked from there. And then actually, uh, Ferdy Groffet uh, actually orchestrated it for Paul Whiteman's orchestra, which is, so it was actually kind of a three, uh, there were three people involved with it. Um, so I think my guess is he probably started with piano and then worked from there. I mean, every composer you know, works differently, but that's my, my understanding of it, is that he started with that, um, and then he gave it on to orchestrate. Yes. Do you find ray time elements in this piece? Oh, sorry, say that again. Do you find ray time elements rag time. in this piece? Um, I think there's a lot of uh, ray time incorporates lots of octaves and lots of kind of jagged rhythms. So I think probably there's some ragtime time elements there, and that that makes sense because you know if he was doing these, you know what we were talking about, he was a song plugger and he was exposed to all these different styles. I think it's quite possible, and I think there are some ragtime time elements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, that's, well, it's funny because when I play this with orchestra, um, I just love listening to the orchestra play the, you know, and I don't have to play it, it just, it just, it just washes over me, and I kind of like that, and then when I do get to play, it's, it's really, it's a great, it's a great collaborative piece, and it's, it's, um, I'd say that that's, it's, I mean, that's one, I think the orchestra play, and then it inspires me with the, with the kind of commentary in that part. Um, but I do love the first piano entrance. Da 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 dum bum, but it kind of it's fun to interrupt the orchestra a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You said a lot about the improvisatory element in the piece, and I think you eliminated that quite a bit. I was just wondering if you know much about where his classical training was, or how, how that figures into it. There it seems that uh, what holds the piece together has something to do with the, his experiences more in the classical vein and then this, the improvisatory thing that gives it all these unexpected qualities that keeps it fresh and exciting. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a uh, great question. I think I, it's, it's still something I'm trying to figure out with it because, I mean, he does repeat certain elements in, in kind of chunks, right? And then he'll, he'll play around with those chunks and illuminate in different ways. You know, Beethoven has a great ability to take one motive and, and paint it and, 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 and bathe it in different lights and things. And I think Gershwin, I'm not comparing him to Beethoven in that sense, but he's able to take, you know, these, these small motives or even small themes, and he keeps changing them in different ways. So he's keeping, it's almost like um, this idea of Ritornello, which is a Baroque idea. You have a theme that's repeated and keeps coming back. And so it's almost like a painted Ritornello in some sense. You have kind of four main themes in a piece. Um, and they keep coming back and they keep getting entwined. I mean, he was classically trained, um, and there's actually a story that he went, after he wrote this piece, he went to France to study with uh, Nadia Boulanger, and apparently she said to him after he played, she said, I don't want you to study with me, you're gonna lose your, your, your improvisatory kind of uh, sensibilities, and I don't, wanna, I don't wanna mess you up. Um, so, so it's interesting, and she, you know, very fantastic you know, piano teacher and, and uh, very renowned, and here she said, you know, I'm going to let you do your thing, and it's interesting too because Gershwin was kind of an overnight sensation with the with the with the, the song Swanee. He really kind of got famous overnight. This was before he wrote. I think it was in 1918. I want to say this is before he wrote uh, Rhapsody in Blue, which is in 1924. And overnight, all of a sudden, he got these great reviews for this, and he was really uh, he got famous very quickly. And so that could be could be part of the reason why when um, Paul Whiteman put together this this program, and he had this big ad in the newspaper about this new piece by Gershwin, he was probably hoping that maybe, you know, he could help him out, you know, with his, you know, publicity. Or, you know, that sounds a little cynical, but, uh, but we have to thank Paul Whiteman, or, you know, orchestra, and his publicity department, I guess, because they said, you've got to write this, and you know, what's he going to do, not write it after there's this big advertisement in the you know, New York newspaper, right? Yeah. I can't believe three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Composers need deadlines. That's what, that's what you know. <laughs> they, they do. I know. <laughs> yes. Do we know who did, in 1924, did they know what they had right away? I mean, oh, that's, that's a good question, Ellen. Did they know this was a masterpiece? Um, I think, I think that, that it did get, get great reviews and people really, really enjoyed it. So I think right off the bat, it was very successful. 
um, which is rare, right? You think about pieces like the Rite of Spring by Stravinsky where people were rioting in their seats and leaving and screaming and stuff. It didn't have, it didn't have that kind of impact, right? It was like people really liked it. And they, you know, they were, I'm sure he got standing ovations and stuff. Um, so I think, you know, probably yes, they knew, but I don't know if they would know that, you know, years later, here we are still playing. And I think that's also the, the um, what makes a piece of music great, too, is that the fact that it's able to stand after all these years and centuries in some cases. And that gives us some idea of, of its, you know, its ability to stay with you. You know, even pieces like Claire de Lune, you know, Claire de Lune was used in the movie Twilight about, you know, vampires and teenagers and whatever. So, you know, it's, it, there's, there's this great music, right, that's even uh, from years and years ago, like Claire de Lune, we still hear it, you hear it in pop music uh, references and in, in movies and things, yeah. But interesting yeah. enough, this one, Mary had a prime name with the Beach Boys, that this is one of the first pieces he heard and they made him go on the, you know. Really? That one of the Beach Boys? What was it? Brian? Brian Williams. Brian Williams. Williams. Really? The Beach Boys. Well, there you go, yeah. And uh, it's, I mean, that's the other thing, too. It has these really, into these rhythms and these things that really energize you, and it has the jazz element and the classical element, which was the purpose of this, this concert where it got premiered at. It was to bring together classical and jazz, and it really, it seems like it worked well, you know? So, yeah. Yes? So what about the themes in this piece uh, speak to you about the American spirit? Mm. I think that definitely the fact that you have these variety of styles in it uh, gives it this kind of idea that it's a melting pot, and then it all somehow comes together even though it's, you know, somewhere in the higher register of the keyboard, somewhere in the lower register, and it has this, you know, really amalgamation of, of, of diverse styles and, you know, the, this idea, it's all tied together with this, you know, Western form to it in a way, but it has all this whether it's the rhythms or some of those jazz-like harmonies, like you know, New Orleans, I think you mentioned it was like a New Orleans sound. So I think to me it's that having that uh, coming together of all these different musical forces really makes it, it, it packs a punch for sure, <laughs> yeah.